sometimes parents uh, struggle with trying to be nice to their kids uh, instead of trying to be kind. And this happens in adult relationships as well, so for sure this would be applicable in your adult relationships. Uh, being nice is really about not ruffling feathers, um, making everybody comfortable, making sure there's no discomfort, and um, and a lot of times that can mean that you acquiesce or give in to somebody's request, even when it goes against what you want. And that's really the difference between kindness and niceness. I, I don't ever strive to be nice, but I always strive to be kind. Uh, niceness is not something I think anybody should really aspire to be because oftentimes with niceness, it's basically this surface level um, comfort that we're offering people and it goes against our boundaries or their boundaries almost always in some way. So I'll give an example, right? Um, you know, your kids are, you know, we're driving you crazy all night and you've, you know, you're still so upset about the long meltdowns because they were saying mean things to you and all of this junk happened. And then, you know, they want to snuggle up with you and read bedtime stories. The nice thing to do would be to say yes to the bedtime stories, yes to that moment of connection, um, because it's the nice thing to do, right? They're making a request, it's a nice request, we're nice when we say yes. But the kind thing to do would actually to be to honor your experience and draw a boundary. The kind thing to do is going to come along with some sadness. The kind thing to do by honoring your boundaries and saying, I'm too sad to read books tonight. I'm still frustrated about what happened with brushing teeth and with the fight you had with your brother. I'm not gonna be able to read stories tonight. I'm, I'm too frustrated. That would be the kind thing to do for a multitude of reasons, but it certainly wouldn't be the nice thing to do. Uh, the reasons why we might choose that kindness is because we're teaching our kids in that uh, in that instance that there are very, very real consequences to their actions. And sometimes that means that we're not ready to play a fun game. We're not ready to read bedtime stories. We need time to calm down and take care of our own emotions instead of using that time for bedtime stories. Now, uh, this can also move into um, punishment, which I also want to avoid. And there's a difference between natural, natural consequences and punishment. If I'm saying to the kids, no, I'm not going to read you stories. You were so rude to me earlier. That is punishment because I'm using the stories as a way to make them feel bad about what they did earlier. But the natural consequence to being totally tired and yelled at and whatever it is by the kids is I don't feel I don't feel a sense of warmth right now. I don't feel like I have the energy to read stories. So the natural consequence is I actually need to go take some time alone. I don't have space for stories tonight. I'm too sad about what happened earlier. That's a natural consequence. And so oftentimes people are rescuing their kids from the natural consequences of their actions and at the same time choosing to instill punishments uh, and be punitive about their actions. And sometimes you have families who are on one side of the spectrum where we're trying to really, really be nice and rescue them from any bad feelings. And on the other hand, you have other parents uh, who really want to drive in those punishments and what they see as consequences because they're afraid that their kids are going to turn out disrespectful. Most of the time that's why families do that. We want to opt for kind in the middle and kindness means there are consequences of the, dishes, the, the decisions, but I don't need to add on to those. I can just honor what really is. I can just honor what 
comes up as a result result of those breaks in trust, as a result of those um, moments of disconnection. We have repair work to do when trust is broken. We have repair work to do when we have been unkind to each other, when we've been mean to each other. And so the natural consequence is we, we spend time repairing and we wait for some time to pass and we give each other some space and we go on our own as the parent navigating whatever we need to do to come back to a place of centeredness so that we can show up the best we can. So <clears throat> in parenting, my suggestion for you is never strive to be nice. Never strive to, to just uh, smooth things over for the sake of comfort. Uh, but have the hard questions, have the hard conversations, and do it with kindness. That means you're honoring your own boundaries, you're honoring their boundaries, and you're letting the natural consequences sit. You're not adding to the natural consequences, but you're not rescuing them from them either. You're giving permission to feel what's going on in your experience and honor that as real and give your kids a chance to rise. You talk about what's going on. And if you don't know how to do any of this, uh, that's fine, that's what this group is for. We have so many free resources uh, on that repair work that I was talking about. And um, we have we have step-by-step -step processes that you can go through to learn how to put these skills into practice. The last thing I would want for you is to be kind of like stuffing things down and plastering on a smile in your own family. You want, you want everybody to, to be able to have their needs met. And when I say needs, here, here are the things I'm referring to. I'm going to talk a little bit about the four principles that we try and make sure that we're implementing uh, as a part of the present parenting process. Everybody deserves to be listened to when they're struggling. Everybody deserves to be spoken to with respect, even when the speaker's upset. Everybody deserves their... their um, did I do it in the wrong order? <laughs> I think I'm okay. Everybody, yeah, I did it in the wrong order. Sorry. Everybody deserves to be listened to when they are struggling. Everybody deserves to be spoken to with respect, even when the speaker's upset. Everybody deserves their body safety, and everybody deserves their boundaries to be respected. So, uh, each one of we could do a video on each one of these, and I, I'm sure that we have. Uh, but implementing this with kindness, implementing these, uh, these principles with kindness is where families oftentimes fall down um, because we weren't, it wasn't modeled for us to speak to somebody when, with kindness when we were upset. You know, we did have that stuffing down of our feelings and pretending that everything was okay. Or we could get big and loud and mean and say mean things to each other when we we're upset. There, there's a, there's a, there are so many different ways that we might violate each of these rules. And for most families, these four, these four principles, these four rules are not at play. Most of the time, um, body safety is, you know, is, is being violated. And that could be something as simple as I, t I snatch the tablet out of their hand when, when they're saying when they won't turn it off, right? Even that is a violation of the body safety rule, right? Um, there are so many there are so many different examples but I when I say body safety I don't just I don't don't just make I'm not just referring to spanking or hitting or yelling or something like that although it certainly includes those um, we uh, we're violating body safety when we are forcing ourselves into their room when they don't when they need some space uh, we're violating their emotional boundaries when we're we're forcing them to have a conversation that they're not ready to have there are so many different ways that we can violate these things and sometimes those violations happen as a result of trying to be nice. Um, sometimes we're violating our own boundaries as we're trying to be nice, as we're trying to smooth things over. And then we, what happens is people stuff their feelings down, stuff them down, stuff, and, stuff, stuff them down, and eventually explode. So they're trying to be nice, they're white knuckling it, trying to be nice, trying to be nice, and then eventually they can't do it anymore, and then there's an explosion. And so we don't we want to skip all of that we want to bypass all of that and work toward boundaries work toward kindness and work toward making sure that everybody understands how their behavior affects the other members of the family and learn how to make meaningful repair so that that doesn't keep happening 
If you need help with any of this, you'd probably be a great candidate for my group or private coaching programs. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, there are tons of free resources, but if you're ready to get hands-on help, let me know. Put it in the comments, send me a DM, and I will get you hooked up with um, with a quote for the different the different pricing options, and I'll and I'll get you um, a scheduled or with a consultation call with me so that we can figure out what uh, what is the best path path forward for your family. All right, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.